Heart valve disease affects nearly 11 million Americans and three out of four people know very little about it. The signs, the symptoms that you need to be aware of. Joining us now to discuss this, we have Dr. John Paul Pham. He is an interventional cardiologist at Memorial Hospital. And some of those numbers you see, again, a lot of people not aware. So let's talk more about this. What are the signs and symptoms of this condition? Well, uh, today is National Heart Valve Disease Awareness Day. So the, uh, the goal is to create awareness for valvular heart disease. Mm -hmm. So valvular heart disease affects anywhere between three to six million Americans. So what is valvular heart disease? Right. It's basically a uh, disease of the heart valves. Heart valves are gateways that allow blood flow to go from one uh, heart chamber to the next. And what can happen with these heart valves are that you can get, uh, a valve can become leaky where blood flow does not go forward properly and valves can become stenotic or narrow right. where, valve, where also blood flow doesn't go forward properly. And is this something that happens over time typically or in some cases can it be immediate? Usually happens over time. Uh, things that can happen immediately can be in situations of a heart attack where a valve is damaged uh, in, those, in those situations. So let's talk about that because when we talk about heart disease, much of it is something that we can monitor and pay attention to and pay attention to signs and symptoms. What are those signs that, you know, something may be wrong that could eventually go down this road? So uh, symptoms can be, can vary between patient to patient, but most symptoms that are reported are shortness of breath, fatigue, and chest pain. And so the, the goal with National Heart Valve Disease Day is to promote awareness, uh, to what create awareness for risk factors, symptoms, as well as detection and treatment. Because right. if you have intervention, it, it really can save your life. Absolutely. But if not, you know, it's a much grim circumstance or Absolutely. outcome could happen. Absolutely. So let's talk about blood thinners versus anticoagulants. Because oftentimes when you do have a heart issue, that's the first thing they do, put you on blood thinners to make sure that your blood can get through those valves and arteries. So uh, blood thinners or anticoagulants are uh, usually used for conditions such as an irregular heartbeat, uh, atrial fibrillation, or mechanical valves. Um, with atrial fibrillation, the reason why blood thinners are used is because uh, blood, the heart doesn't contract properly in atrial fibrillation, and when blood becomes stagnant and doesn't uh, flow properly, clots can form. And these clots, when they leave the heart, they can go anywhere. But if they go to the brain, they can cause a stroke. Right, right, which is so detrimental yeah. you know, to the body. Any particular age group that this affects more than others? Typically, uh, patients over the age of 65. Okay. Uh, are most uh, heavily affected with uh, atrial fibrillation. But atrial fibrillation can affect anybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we've seen that, yeah. Correct, correct. Okay. Um, so the alternative to, well, what are the blood thinners that are available? We have warfarin, which is the oldest blood thinner available today. It was developed in the 1950s. Um, the issue with warfarin is there's a lot of monitoring involved to make sure the levels are therapeutic. There's a lot of factors that can also change the therapeutic levels, such as diet, weight and other medications. So in the 2000s, the NOACs or the novel oral anticoagulants were released by the, from the FDA. Um, the uh, advantage is that there's no monitoring with these NOACs. There's uh, less side effects and better risk of stroke, pre uh, stro uh, risk of stroke pre uh, um, prevention. Right, Correct. okay, yeah. so definitely talk to your doctors Except, about what absolutely. are your best options. Absolutely. Thank you so much for coming yeah, in today. Thank you. All right, so if you missed any of this information, don't worry. We're going to post this interview to our website. A lot of good info here on newsforjacks.com. You'll find it under the Live Healthy section.